Aki's A-List every day brought to you by our great friends and partners at Circa Sports Illinois. I'm thinking about heading to Vegas, too, and staying Are at really? Circa. Yeah. Nice. Uh, bet like the, like It's a perfect time when the Bears bye week happens, too, in October. Great Vegas weather. Go gamble on uh, some football then that weekend. Bet like the pros with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Sports betting the way it should be. Download that app, guys. Circa Sports Illinois. Download it today. What do you got, Tyler? All right, you guys are up at Hallis Hall. Took in Bears minicamp day one. What was the best thing you saw today out on the practice field? Keenan Allen in a Bears uniform. I, I would co-sign that. I, I was most like, I, I said earlier, seeing him just kneeling next to DJ Moore and them having a conversation, I, I kind of like, kind of puffed out my chest and said, hey, those two players are on our team. Yes. Roma Dunze, uh, again, making things look easy at times along the sidelines. The um, aggressive nature and confidence that the secondary brings and swagger. Um, you heard Stacey Dales rave about them. I think it's a great debate that we can make a poll question tomorrow. Which unit is better, the Bears secondary or the Bears wide receivers? But those are sort of the, the takeaways. There were some splash plays from Caleb. There were a couple not-so-good plays. It wasn't like all good all, or all bad. It was a rookie quarterback who had his moments for sure good, uh, but also some down moments. So, those were like my handful of things that stood out to me today. All right. Speaking of Keenan Allen, he met with the media today and addressed the looming contract question since he only has one year on the books right now with the Bears. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the goal right now, um, just to go out and do what I always do and, um, you know, just try to remain who I am. And um, the market just got reset. So. <laughs> <laughs> So Keenan Allen talking about that, and we've seen the way that wide receiver contracts have exploded over the last couple of months, really. Given what we've seen with the wide receiver market, does that make it more or less likely that Keenan Allen is one and done with the Chicago Bears? I, un, unfortunately, I, if I'd had to answer, answer that question, I would say it's less likely because I don't believe that they are going to break no, but the more banks. likely that he won't be here. Yeah, I, well, I, yeah. It's more likely he won't be here, yes. Less likely he will stay here, I, however you want to say it. I think that – I think initially when they traded for him, my, my thought was is that they were interested in this not being a one-year rental, that they wanted him to be in the fold for a couple of years, especially as you're getting your rookie quarterback you know, going. There, there are still strategic ways I think you can do it. I still think that if you want to wait on DJ Moore, he's got two years left. And if Keenan Allen still is very good in your offense and is great for Caleb Williams and he has a very good year, you can still franchise him and keep him for one more year. And then, keep, in essence, having him here for two years. And then at the end of the second year, wave goodbye to him. Have Roma Dunze under his rookie contract. So he's here for five years under control. And then after that second year of Keenan Allen, then you address D.J. Moore's contract. And then, and then that way, you're not really over the top paying for both of them. What is the franchise tag number projected to be at the end of this year? Anybody? Uh, have I, any I would idea? guess like twenty between twenty three and twenty five. No, it's I a, would guess it's a little more it's than be that. higher because they're yeah. they're knocking it out of the park it's, collectively. When now. it's the average of the top five salaries or hundred twenty percent of what you made the year before, whichever. Yeah, so number, he's making twenty five no, now. But, so. Yeah, but it's whatever number's higher. This right, year so, it was so twenty one point eight. And that's probably that's obviously going to go up next year. So it's got to be higher than twenty five, right? It's got to be one hundred twenty percent of that. Well, you got to think about it. So it's you got it's the average of Jefferson, who just got thirty five. Um, Amon Ra got thirty. Um, AJ Brown, I think, got thirty two. I want to say, um, and then you'd imagine CD Lamb and Jamar Chase signed deals too. So average of the top five, right there. But again, if he does well with Caleb. You know, do you, you're just willing to say goodbye? No, I don't think that this is uh, automatically a one and done. But uh, to answer Tyler's question, I do believe, as the market has kind of adjusted a little bit here, that it's less likely than I initially had hoped. I would never rule it out, but I don't see an environment where they're going to pay. And he's going to ask for 
a ton. Sure, sure. And, and for good reason. And I would if I was him as well. Isn't there hope that DJ Moore is great again and that Roma Dunze is every bit as good as Keenan Allen this year? And then that way it's easier to say, to say goodbye to that, Keenan that, Allen? That would definitely make things, you know, more palatable financially for them, for sure. I would think, too, that in the inevitable two to four games that Keenan Allen misses as well, if Roma Dunze really shows out in those games, you'd imagine the Bears probably move on from Keenan Allen, right? And remember, like, if you look at what Philly's done, and they've paid two of their receivers, or if you look at what Miami's got going on now, the, those, those both receivers, receivers are young on both, in both situations. A.J. Brown's not as young, but A.J. Brown's not, doesn't have the mileage that Keenan Allen has um, I just don't see an environment where they're going to be able to meet his request if it is one of these large requests. My hope all along was, and it was probably just a shot in the dark and it was a long shot, was that he'd be willing to negotiate signing a, a short-term extension that helped him in the short run sure, but was team-friendly on the back end. Right, but they're not talking until... No. Yeah. Until the season. So some rough math real quick. So next year it looks like it'll be at least thirty one million dollars a year for that's, the yeah, for the wide receiver. And that's not that's counting if C D Lamb gets a new deal, which that's, would obviously that's too much. Chase too. And Jamar Chase, yeah. And that, that that's what, a te- almost a ten million dollar spike from last year's franchise tag as well. So I'm sure that's something that not a lot of teams would want to pay on the franchise tag. Real quick, I do want to get to some stadium stuff as well. Um, The Speaker of the House, Emanuel Welch, told WTTW News in an interview yesterday that, as we've said to the Bears over and over again, to the White Sox and also to the Chicago Red Stars, there's just no appetite to use taxpayer funding to fund stadiums for billionaires even after the election. Is this opening the door at all for Arlington Heights? Oh, definitely, I think it is. Uh, I also think it's opening the door for the Bears if they do truly want to to maintain their their residence on the lakefront you're going to have to pay for the vast majority of the, the 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 project and if they have the appetite for that or they have the private funding for that then i think it still makes the lakefront a very viable option it is you know there are other scenarios where there is you know public funding that is being granted i, I think david tepper who's the wealthiest of the owners the nfl owners i believe is trying to put together a a, a rehab project on the stadium in, in Charlotte where they're asking for, I wrote it down, they were asking for a certain amount of money and he was going to pay 50% of it. They're looking for $650 million of public funding. That's a lot of money. Tepper's going to pay the other half. It's a $1.3 billion renovation of the stadium, but he's looking to give put in 50%, and it's something that at least the legislators in that area haven't completely punted on and told them no yet. But it does seem like the tide is changing with regard to the acceptance of these deals. I think the door is always going to be open, Tyler, especially when you own the land. You've already re- owned the land, and you've already demolished Arlington. So I think the door is, remains open to that. Um, but it depends if the Bears want to walk through that door. Like, how much negotiating will happen over the summer with these these people in Springfield? Stuff gets done behind closed doors. It too. does. I, I still believe the only way this happens on the lakefront now is if the Bears are willing to put up even more, more a higher percentage. In Arlington Heights, look, I'm sure they're still going to be looking for public money. Yes, they will. So they, absolutely like, they where, will. Where is that public money going to be, you know? coming from but again i just think there are less barriers you don't have to demolish soldier field you don't have the friends of the park in Arlington. yes exactly and i think that tax issue is one that they can get past very easily up there yeah yeah um it it will be fascinating for sure will they address that in hard knocks i want you to answer that question when we come back 